Hello, welcome back to Luke's English Podcast. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing fine. Ready? Yeah, ready? Ready for another episode? Okay, let's do it. Come on then. Let's talk about some stuff. Okay, here's some more stuff to help you learn English, right? That's what this podcast is all about. Stuff to help you learn English. So what kind of stuff have I got lined up for you today? Okay, well, let's get started. So this episode is called something like this. I haven't decided yet what the title of the episode will be. Probably this. Mini mysteries, jokes and observations about the English language and life in general. That's probably too long to have as a title. Maybe I'll choose something else. But anyway, so a while ago, I got an email from a listener called Hannah. Hello, Hannah, if you're listening. Hello. Uh, In the email, Hannah sent me a list of little jokes, funny observations about life and some peculiarities. Shall I say that word again? (laughs) Some peculiarities and mysteries of the English language. So she sent me a little kind of collection of whimsical and amusing questions and jokes. Not just about English. A lot of them are about English, but also just about life in general. So Hannah sent me a list of these little funny things. Peculiarities. Peculiarities, these are just strange things. Things that are peculiar. Strange. Peculiar means strange. So some sort of weird, peculiar, strange, curious... uh, sentences, facts and questions. A collection of whimsical questions and jokes. Whimsical means kind of not very serious, quite uh, fun. And um, if something is whimsical, it kind of makes you think, but it's, it's amusing as well. Okay. So to give you an idea of the kind of stuff I'm talking about, the kind of thing I'm talking about, it's stuff like this. Here's one as an example. English is funny a fat chance and a slim chance are the same thing. Mm. Did you know that? A fat chance, for example, if you say, oh, you know, do you think uh, do you think England are going to win the World Cup? I think they've got a fat chance of winning the World Cup, to be honest, or they've got a slim chance of winning the World Cup. Basically means it's a very low probability that it's going to happen, especially if penalties are involved, as we know. But uh, a fat chance and a slim chance, yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Because you'd imagine one would be fat would be big and a slim one would be sort of... Slim means thin, like the opposite of fat. So how is that possible, that a fat chance... You've got a fat chance of winning that and uh, I think they've got a slim chance of winning that. Yes, they mean the same thing. Hmm? I'll probably be making this face quite a lot during the episode. Huh? Hmm. Faces like that. If you're just listening to the uh, episode, then you obviously won't be able to see those faces. But I think maybe with the, with my, with the noise I made, huh? Hmm. Imagine the face that would go along with those noises, huh? And hmm. I think you can imagine. Here's another one. When you're a child, you don't realise you're also watching your mum and dad grow up. Obviously, we think of a child, we think of the parents in the family home. The parents are watching the children grow up, right? But also the children, <laughs> the children are watching their parents grow up as well, in a way, or at least get older and older. Sometimes when you have kids, you know, sometimes when parents have kids, they're very young, they'll be in their 20s. And yeah, there's still a lot of growing up to be done at any age. But yeah, true. Hmm. Interesting. Next one. The word Q, meaning a line, when you stand in line at the supermarket or the post office or something or a train station, a Q, the word Q is just the letter Q followed by four completely unnecessary letters. I mean, you know, it's French, of course, originally, but I think it's also the same in French. Why do we have U E U E? And why do we need U-E twice, just in case two wasn't enough? Hmm, Q, okay, the letter is pronounced Q. Okay, did someone have a meeting that we didn't know about? Like, okay, we need to to, uh, make a few changes to uh, to the language here. Uh, What about the word Q? Okay, I think we should add a a couple of other letters. Q is too simple. You can't just have a word that's one letter. 
Well, you've got uh, okay, ah, mm. but no, Q is it's it's longer. It should be longer. It's a Q for goodness sake. There's there should be a few people involved, so we'd make it longer. Let's just add a few letters in, even though they're not necessary. Which letters should we have? How about a few vowels? U and E. Okay, have you got any other letters? Nah, let's just repeat the same ones again. Q U E U E should be pronounced queer where shouldn't it really but it no it's not another one uh the last 10 percent of a tube of toothpaste lasts about as long as the first 90 percent have you noticed the last 10 percent of a tube of toothpaste lasts about as long as the first 90 percent same length of time it takes you the same length of time to go through the first 90% of your toothpaste tube. And then when you've got 10% left, that lasts at least the same length of time as the first 90% of the, of the tube. Because somehow you manage to, you roll up the tube, you spend all that time squeezing the end of the tube, and you extract enough, you get an, the same number of toothbrushes, you know, toothbrushing sessions out of that little bit at the end as you do for the whole tube. I don't know. I suppose what that means is that we don't really need to put a whole huge worm of toothpaste on our toothbrush. We can do the same job with just a little bit. I think that's what that means. Next one. Every time you check your pockets for your wallet, keys and phone, you do about 25% of the Macarena dance. Just Every day when you're like, okay, I've got my, ch you're kind of doing half the, or <laughs> part of the Macarena dance there in front of your door. Hey, Macarena. Okay. Next. We have all at one point kicked a pregnant woman. You might not want to admit it, but it's true. You're, think, you're thinking, wait a minute, Luke, I've never kicked a pregnant woman. Well, yeah, you have. From the inside. When you were a baby, you will have kicked the inside of your mother's womb. So yeah, technically you have a kick. You have kicked a pregnant woman. Don't feel bad. You didn't know. You didn't know. So you get the idea, right? Now Hannah said that the list had been sent to her by someone on WhatsApp, so she forwarded them to me just for fun. Well, thanks, Hannah. This is all useful stuff I could use to make an episode of my podcast. Here I am. I'm doing it now. So it's all, a, it's all just a bit of light-hearted fun, in theory. Uh, we'll see if some, some of them maybe may end up being very serious, but the idea is it's just light-hearted th uh, fun. And I'm sure that there's English to learn from this too. So while you're listening, watch out for vocabulary which comes up during this episode. Maybe I'll, at the end, I'll quickly recap some, maybe some bits of English which I think are worth noticing, okay? So let's get started, or, or sh maybe I should say let's continue because we've already started. This is the message from Hannah. She wrote this. Hello, Luke. I just received these jokes on my WhatsApp and I thought of you. Best wishes, Hannah. Very nice. Thank you, Hannah. To be honest, Hannah sent me this ages ago, months ago. It's just this is how long it takes me to actually turn these ideas into episodes. So when you have nothing better to do, just try to find answers for these. Okay, so number one. I'm going to go through them and just read them out, okay? I'm just going to go through the first seven. I'll break them down into sections. I'll just read out all of these uh, sentences um, in the first section, and then I'll go back through and give my comments and stuff. So the first one. If poison expires, is it more poisonous? Or is it no longer poisonous? Poison. Number two. Which letter is silent in the word scent? That's scent meaning perfume, which is spelt S-C-E-N-T. Scent. Which letter is silent in the word scent? Is it the S or the C? Hmm. By the way, as I go through these, before I explain them, let's just see how much of them, how many of them you actually understand. That you know, it's kind of like a little listening comprehension test as well. You could, you could say. That's number two. Let's move on. Number three. Do twins ever realise that one of them is unplanned? <sighs> Ooh, ouch. <laughs> hmm. 
I wonder, do twins ever realise that one of them is unplanned? Number four. Why is the letter W in English called W? Shouldn't it be called double V? Number five. Every time you clean something, every time you clean something, you just make something else dirty. Huh? Number six. The word swims, S-W-I-M-S, the word swims upside down is still swims. Take the word swims, turn it upside down. It still says swims. <laughs> I don't know if there's any... Uh, there's no kind of conspiracy theory. What does this mean? Why, why, um, what, what's the hidden message here? Maybe conspiracy theory is the wrong word. I don't know. No deeper hidden meaning here. Like, hmm, what is the hidden message here? That we should, uh, we should be swimming up on our backs? Swim on your back, swim on your front. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Next. Number seven. A hundred years ago, Everyone owned a horse, and only the rich had cars. Today, everyone has cars, and only the rich own horses. Hmm. Okay. Oh, here comes the, another one. All right. If you replace W with T in the words what, where, and when, you get the answer to each one. If you replace the W with T in the words what, where, and when, you get the answer to each one. Ah. ah, interesting. Okay, let's go back through those. I'll just kind of give my comments and maybe explain one or two things. So the first one then is was this. If poison expires, is it more poisonous or is it no longer poisonous? So poison is like some stuff in a bottle that will kill you right? Uh, just any sort of toxic substance, usually in some kind of unmarked bottle with a skull and crossbones on it, some very dodgy looking bottle that some evil person pulls out of an inside pocket, maybe takes a little cork top out of it and pours some into someone's drink, you know, in a fairy tale or something, and then slips the bottle back into their inside pocket and then disappears into the shadows and then someone unwittingly uh, drinks the drink, but it's got poison in it, and uh, 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 they die, right? That's poison. Now, if poison expires, if something expires, it means it, it gets too old. It's, it doesn't work anymore after it's, after it's expired. Now, normally, when food products or things you have in the, in the kitchen, if they expire, if they go past their, if they go past their expiry date, it means that it's not safe to eat or drink that anymore. Like, for example, I don't know, milk or something. If milk goes past its expiry date or other types of food or drink go past their expiry date, if they expire, it's not safe to drink them, right? Because they could be poisonous. They could kill you. But what about poison? If poison expires, does it become more poisonous in the same way that other things do? They become dangerous when they're after their expiry date. Does poison become even more dangerous? Or does poison become no longer dangerous? Because, yeah, it's, it's gone past, as it's, it's, this poison has expired. After a certain amount of time, it just doesn't work anymore. It's not poison. It's just like, in fact, the longer you leave it, the, the healthier it becomes. I don't know, actually. I genuinely don't know. Surely poison just stays poisonous forever, surely. You know, I'd imagine it gets, it gets more poisonous. If you are an expert in poisons... <laughs> If you're a witch or a wizard or something like that, or a snake or a spider, venom, poison, whatever, then um, send me an email or leave a comment below to share your expert opinion. If you are a snake or a spider and you manage to leave a comment on the internet, I'd be very impressed. Number two, which letter is silent in the word scent, like scent meaning perfume? Is it the S or the C? Perfu a scent could be a perfume or a smell. The scent of wildflowers. Right, but a perfume could be something you wear, which also gives a smell. So scent could be either a smell or a perfume. 
So which which letter is silent in that word sent? Because it's S C E N T. Now if you if the S is silent, if it's just C E N T, then that's pronounced cent as well. Like uh, in 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 money, right? In America, you've got dollars and cents, fifty cents, right? But if it's S E N T, if the if the C is silent, it's still sent, isn't it? I sent an email. So it's actually a good question. Which letter is silent in that word? The S or the C? Now, actually, I googled it, of course. Oh, I thought I'd, I thought I found the answer to that. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to Google this one right now. I thought I'd already done this, but um, let's see. English spelling does not always reflect the exact pronunciation of words as it has evolved over time. So basically, the long to cut a long story short, the word "sent" uh, comes originally from a French word where there was no C, it was S-E-N-T-I-R, sentir. Uh, and um, so that's the, the origin of the word. Why, there, why a C was put into the word at some point is uh, a longer and probably a lot more boring of a story. And so, you know, the answer is that the C is silent. But anyway, moving on. Number three. Oh, this one's painful. Do twins ever realize that one of them is unplanned? Yeah, when you think about it, no one ever plans to have twins, do they? <laughs> no one ever plans to have twins. No one's like trying to have twins. I mean, obviously, if you have twins, that's wonderful, right? Having There's nothing wrong with having twins. In fact, that's amazing and fantastic and wonderful. And I know I've got friends who have twin kids and it's an incredible thing. But nevertheless, you can't actually plan for it. So whenever you have twins... Whenever parents have twins, oh, <laughs> they always normally were planning to have one, but they got two. So does which one was unplanned? Yeah. Hmm. That's good. There's some psychology there because having known some, um, you know, pairs of identical twins in my life, it's interesting to see the differences between each one. If you are a twin and you're listening to this, again, leave us a comment. What's it like being a twin? And have you ever considered this question? I mean, that's not a very nice question to consider, is it really? Um, but I'm sure that you are loved and cherished by your family. At least I hope you are. All right, let's move on. Number four. Why is the letter W in English called double U? Shouldn't it be called double V? Good point. Um, I did find an answer to this one on the Grammophobia blog. Let's see if I can keep this simple. So, why is the d letter W called double U? It looks like a double V to me. The answer is that the name of the 23rd letter of the English alphabet is double U because it was originally written that way in Anglo-Saxon times. As the Oxford English Dictionary explains it, the ancient Roman alphabet did not have a letter W. So in the, uh, in the 7th century, when the Latin alphabet was first used in early Old English writing, it was necessary to invent a symbol to represent that sound, the kind of w sound. At first, the sound was represented by u-u, literally a w. It wasn't written as v because the letter v didn't exist in Old English. And a double v would not have approximated the sound anyway. The double U was replaced by another symbol in the 8th century and uh, the, a kind of a, another symbol that I'm not familiar with, a character from the runic alphabet called a win. In the 11th century, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, the old UU form was reintroduced by Norman scribes as a ligatured, that is, joined, form written as a W, looking like two, two Vs. Okay, fine, fine. That's why there is a reason. The reason is not quite as amusing as just answer, asking the question. Um, it's because there was no V when the, the UU or W letter was introduced. There was no such letter as V, so it was UU. And then over time, that UU um, was written with sharp points at the end rather than curved and yet it looks like a 
double V, but it's still called a double U because that was originally how it was written, looking like two U's together. Fascinating stuff. Number five, every time you clean something, you just make something else dirty, which is true, isn't it? You know, if you're cleaning the kitchen and you use a cloth and you clean, you're essentially just wiping the um, the dirt from the the sink. If you're cleaning the sink, you're just wiping the dirt from the sink onto the cloth. So we're really, whenever we clean things, we're just moving dirt from one place to another place. Which is quite an interesting idea because it, you know, just it makes you think, where does all the dirt go? Eventually, we wipe it all off, we, it goes onto the cloth, then we clean the cloth, right, under the tap with some soap, we clean it off, remove all the dirt, the dirt goes into the pipe, into the pipe under your sink. Maybe some of the dirt stays in there, but then sometimes you will use chemicals to remove the dirt from inside the pipe and that the dirt gets washed out down the drain into the sewer. Some of the dirt stays there and just lives in the sewer. And then it, the sewer, these are the tunnels under the, under the ground. But then a lot of that dirt gets washed out into rivers. And then ultimately, if the dirt continues, it'll go all the way from the river. It'll become like mud or silt or, or sand or whatever. And then it'll make its way out into the ocean. So ultimately, we're just... <laughs> filling up the oceans with dirt is that is that right and does that dirt how does that dirt get back out of the sea these are questions that i probably am not qualified to answer but i wonder that if if you know when you clean dirt off something if you clean dirt off the your bathtub and you wash it down the drain does that dirt well can that dirt ever find its way all the way back to your bathtub again is that possible if you go to the beach and you go swimming and you get sand all over yourself and you wash it off in the bath, is, is the dirt going like, oh, I remember this bath. I suppose it's possible. You never know. You never know. Um, number six, the word swims upside down is still swims. Yeah, because the W looks like an M, the I looks like an I, and the M looks like a W, and S looks the same when it's, when it's turned upside down. This is interesting. Now, um, having checked it out, uh, I have learned that this is a thing. Words like this that look the same, either upside down or if you turn them, uh, they look the same. These are called ambigrams. Then there's a very interesting Wikipedia page dedicated to the subject of ambigrams. And um, so this Wikipedia page here says, an ambigram is a calligraphic design meaning a, a way that a word is written, that has several interpretations as written. So it could, it could say several different things, or maybe the same thing um, if it's symmetrical. There you go, the answer is it's, uh, it's an ambigram. Yeah, there you go. You can impress your friends now with that one. Are there any other like, ambigrams that we, that we know of? SOS, SOS, the distress signal, SOS is a natural rotating ambigram. You can put SOS upside down. It'll still say SOS. The number 619 is an ambigram. 619, turn it upside down, it still says 619. What else? The word pod, that's a good one. Pod in podcast, turn that upside down, it still says pod. Suns, S-U-N-S. -S. Um, the, the word yeah, Y-E-A-H looks the same upside down, dollop and past. These are all natural rotational ambigrams. Hmm, you learn something new every day. Next, number seven. A hundred years ago, everyone owned a horse and only the rich had cars. Today, everyone has cars and only the rich own horses. Hmm, <laughs> it's certainly an interesting, um, uh, interesting thing to consider. Um, I don't know if everyone had horses and now everyone has cars. I mean, I don't have a car. But anyway, it is an interesting thing that rich people, most, lots of people had horses in the past, but only, you know, the elite, very rich people had cars. Now everyone's got cars. And uh, the sort of the rich, posh people own horses. <laughs> they swapped. 
They they swapped. I don't know. Did rich people kind of go? You know what? Everyone's got cars, and um, doesn't just doesn't feel the same anymore. I think uh, horses is where it's at. Yeah, interesting. Um, number eight. If you replace the W with T in the words what, where, and when, you get the answer to each one. Yeah. So what becomes that? What? 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 Yeah, that. Where becomes there. Where? Where? There. And when becomes then. Like what? That. Where? There. When? Back then. Ah, interesting. Okay, let's continue. Still have time for fun, it says in Hannah's list. Let's try this. Four great confusions which are still unresolved. Okay, let, I'll just read them out. Let's see if you can understand them. And then I'll go through them and, and sort of describe them, talk about them, give my comments. So the first one is this. At a movie theatre or cinema, which armrest is yours? Is it the one on the right or the one on the left? Is it both? Is it neither? Is it, if it's just one, which one is it? Hmm. Number two. If people evolved... If people, humans, evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? To be honest, I think that one is not unresolved. I think we have answered that question. I think that we do have the answer to that. I'll come back to that. Um, number three. Spelling in English. Why is there a D? Why is the letter D in the word fridge but not in refrigerator? It's the same thing. A fridge, a refrigerator, they're the same thing. But you spell fridge with a D. But when you write refrigerator, no D. What's going on? A fridge, you know, that's where you keep your drinks cold and other things. You put your milk, keep your milk in the fridge. Do you keep your butter in the fridge? There's a question that will divide the world between people who keep the butter in the fridge and people who don't. And some people are thinking, what animals don't put their butter in the fridge? And other people are thinking, are you mad you put your butter in the fridge? How, on, how do you spread butter that's been in the fridge? That's another question for another time. Uh, next, number four. Who knew what time it was when the first clock was made? Imagine they've just invented, someone has just revealed their invention. Here it is, I've invented the clock. And everyone's like, ooh, wow, what's that? You know, and I'm going to wind up the clock now for the first time. And they'd have to set the clock. And that person's like, okay, I'm going to wind up the clock. Okay, well, just before I set this clock, can you, what time is it? Does anyone know? And we're like, time? What is how do we know what time it is? <laughs> um, all right, let's go back through those four things. Uh, at a cinema, which armrest is yours? Yeah, this, this is the, the cause of many um, passive-aggressive battles in the cinema. How many times have you been to the cinema? Or indeed, how many times have you travelled by train or plane and you've had a little battle with the person next to you over the armrest because you're thinking because they they might sit with their arm on the armrest and you're thinking that's my armrest and it's like a battle over the territory of the armrest it's a little little um little case study of human nature right there isn't it um a a, a battle over the armrest but is, who, who has the right to that armrest? Well, let's think about it, right? If you've got a, let's say, a row of seats at the cinema, there's 10 seats. Each seat has, so 10 seats, but then there's 11 armrests. Am I right? I think so. 10 seats, 11 armrests. Let's say each seat has an armrest on its left side, the armrest to the left, and then the one on the end has got another one on the right. So that's, that's 11 armrests, but 10 seats. So I suppose there's only one person who, in that cinema who's going to have two arms, who's going to be able to put their two arms on, you know, both armrests. The, there's only one person in there, in that row of seats, who has the right to claim two armrests. 
everyone else has only the right to claim one armrest. But which one? That's something that I think the, the human race will never be able to organise themselves to the point where we can agree in a cinema which armrest is belongs to who. Another reason why there will ne never be peace on Earth. You know, we'll, maybe one day we'll achieve peace between nations on Earth. Hopefully. Let's all pray for that. Or at least let's all try and make that happen. Um, and then when we've done it, it's like, okay, we've signed the peace accords. All the world leaders signed them. You know, they've, they've cut their hands open and made a blood uh, contract together. You know, like in the movies. I don't know why, why is that in the movies when people um, sort of do that, make a promise to each other. They always slice open their hand or the thumb in order to seal the deal. You could take blood from another part of the body. It doesn't have to be from a really impractical place, a painful spot. Anyway, but let's say the world leaders, have, we've, we've managed to achieve world peace. The contract has been sealed. We're committed to peace. Let's go to the cinema. And then, of course, all the world leaders sit down in the cinema and then it's like, uh, like the Chinese president, the American president, trying to, trying to, like, oh, that's my armrest, isn't it? No, he's got his arm on the armrest. And then next thing you know, it's back to square one. <laughs> that will never be solved. Uh, number two. If people evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? Now, this, I think that this one has been solved. Uh, we know the answer to this one. Like e evolutionary biology has answered this question, and I understand the 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 idea here. If people evolved from monkeys, why are monkeys still around? So the idea here is that there is a single line of evolution where you have monkeys that evolve into, you know, eventually evolve into humans, and that the monkeys don't survive. You know, only the ones who are like humans survive and you keep going and down the chain until you end up with humans. OK, that's a sort of a fairly simplistic version of evolutionary theory, isn't it? But it doesn't work like that. Instead, you can have monkeys. OK, Here, imagine many millions of years ago, there's monkeys or something like monkeys. And then maybe that group of monkeys that divides, like some of the monkeys go, you know what, we're going to go over here now. Okay, we, you know, we, we think that there's some good, like bananas and banana trees and stuff over there. So we're going to go over there, right guys, maybe see you later. Or maybe they have a fight and they're like, ah, you know, in the cinema. Not that monkeys millions of years ago were going to the cinema, or today, in fact, for that matter. But anyway, and so the group, you know, the, this group of monkeys divides and this, this lot go over here and this lot go over here. And these ones develop uh, over time separately from these ones. And they develop into another, clearly another species. Similar to monkeys, they share maybe a lot of DNA with these, the first group of monkeys, but these guys have evolved into something else. And you end up maybe a few hundred thousand years later and you've got two distinct groups. Now they share a common ancestor, monkey number one. But after those, after that split happened, the two groups evolve separately into two distinctly different species. So you've got, let's say, monkey, monkey one has evolved into both monkey two and monkey three. Okay, and then they split off. Those two groups, maybe they go to the cinema and they have an argument and they split off into several groups again and these other groups evolve differently. So that's what's happened, is that monkeys, so there's, you've got monkeys, apes, humans, you know, and certain types of apes. So we, humans are apes, along with gorillas, orangutans, uh, chimpanzees, and um, is it gibbons? Um think so. Uh, so we are apes in that family. Now we are actually closest to the chimpanzees we share, is it something 90 something percent, 99 percent DNA with chimpanzees? And I know what you're thinking at this point, you're thinking maybe you do Luke, <laughs> um, <laughs> especially with that beard. Um, I don't know. But 
you see, there is actually an image uh, which I found online which sort of explains this, uh, where you've got, um, first of all, let's say humans and chimpanzees who are pretty close. Humans and chimpanzees evolved from a common ancestor. There was something, a group of animals, and from that group you got humans on one side and chimpanzees on the other side. They, they evolved from the same ancestor, okay? And uh, then, then that ancestor, um, you got that ancestor and then you got gorillas and that ancestor that later became humans and chimpanzees, that ancestor uh, and gorillas evolved from the same um, ancestor. Okay, and it keeps going back and back and back, you see, with the different species of ape or monkeys um, evolving from um, common ancestors. So there you go. That's the, that's the answer. So just to go back to the original question then, uh, if humans evolved from monkeys, why do monkeys still exist? Well, it's not that humans replaced monkeys, okay, but humans and monkeys as we know them now, they both evolved or they both share a common ancestor, okay? So humans haven't replaced monkeys, humans have evolved alongside monkeys or at the same time as monkeys. It's just that if you trace humans and monkeys and the other types of ape, if you trace their history back, eventually you'll see that they all share one common ancestor. And so, you know, the two species over many, many, many thousands of years split off from that one ancestor and then evolved simultaneously into two separate species. So humans never replaced monkeys. Humans and monkeys share a common ancestor who doesn't exist anymore. And if he did exist anymore, he would probably be a bit annoyed. He'd be like, who are these new, who are these humans and monkeys? Was I not good enough? Apparently not, apparently not. Apparently humans and monkeys were more adaptable to the situations that they found themselves in. And those ones survived, and the, like the ones that were on this side, the ones that were a bit more human-like survived and survived and survived until eventually we end up with Luke's English podcast. There you go. And but I'm sure you're very glad I told you that. And some of you are thinking, we know we knew that already, Luke. Thank you. Number three. Why is there a D in the word fridge, but not in refrigerator? So, you know, can you just put that milk in the fridge? F-R-I-D-G-E, fridge. Can you put that milk in the refrigerator? F- uh, sorry, e r e f r i g e r a t o r. No D. Just go. Just drop the D. Go straight to G. What happened? Was it? You know, is this a case of like, okay, the re the word refrigerator's got too many letters in it already. We need to lose one of these letters. The word's just going to fall apart if, if we add too many letters in it. This is ridiculous. We've got to drop one of the letters. Which one? Um, D. Let's drop the D. Okay. I don't think that's what happened. I don't think anyone actually had that meeting. Uh, but I did, again, I did find uh, a website answer to this question. Let's have a little look. This is from MrAppliance.com, a website about appliances like fridges and freezers and washing machines. Let's see what it says. Let's see if we can make some sense from this. As is the case with many multi-syllable words, as this household appliance, the refrigerator, gained popularity, an abbreviated version was born. And as early as 1920, the word frig, F-R-I-G, can be found in written publications. Probably fridge, right? F-R-I-G, because the F-R-I-G in refrigerator is pronounced with a J sound, not a G sound, it's a J sound which in phonemes looks like a D and then the J, right? J. In spelling, that would be probably written D-G. So the abbreviated version of refrigerator was originally spelt F-R-I-G, but probably pronounced fridge. But the thing is, when you see the word F-R-I-G, you would probably pronounce that frig. 
Okay, so the word, the original abbreviation from the 1920s was FRIG and that could be found in written publications although it's likely to have been used in spoken language much earlier. Probably pronounced fridge but spelt FRIG. Since both the technology and the jargon were very, relatively new it was up to those writers to determine its spelling. And it's most likely that the word was changed from FRIG to FRIDGE in order to mimic the spelling of similar words that had the same sound such as bridge, ledge, dodge, fudge and more. There you go, you're welcome everyone. Number four, who, who knew what time it was when the first clock was made? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a funny question. Um, isn't it? It's a funny question. I suppose that before the clock, I mean, sh yeah, of course, of course, before the clock was invented, we we had already established the idea that a day was divided into, you know, two 12 hour cycles, right? Um, and so it, after we'd worked that out, maybe using sundials, after we decided basically to divide the day into 24 hours, an hour is 60 minutes, these units of time measurement had already been established uh, before the actual clock, the first clock was made. So we did know what time it was before the first clock was invented. It wasn't like, okay, I've made this thing. Now, if only I knew what time it was. <laughs> um, okay, let's carry on. Uh, Hannah's list continues and it says, well, try this now, ambiguities of the English language. Okay, so these are going to be about English. Let's go. I wonder why the word funeral starts with fun. F-U-N, funeral. Why does the word funeral start with F-U-N, fun? Sadder all would be better because you're all sad. <laughs> Next one. Why isn't a fireman or a fireman called a waterman? Good question. How come lipstick doesn't do what it says? It doesn't stick to your lips. It's always coming off on glasses and cigarettes and stuff. How come lipstick doesn't do what it says? Next one. If money doesn't grow on trees, which is what our parents are always saying to us when we're kids, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. If money doesn't grow on trees, how come banks have branches? Hmm. Next one. So, if a vegetarian eats vegetables, what does a humanitarian eat? Humans? Next. How do you get off a non-stop flight? Yeah, we're taking a non-stop flight to, to Los Angeles. If it's a non-stop flight, when, when are we going to arrive? Never. It's never going to stop. It's a non-stop flight. How do we get off? Once you get on a non-stop flight, that's it. You're just on that plane for the rest of your life. Until everyone on the plane dies and then the plane just crashes into the, into the, into the sun. I don't know. Um, next one. Why are goods sent by ship called cargo and those sent by truck shipment? This is a good question. So, you know, cargo ships, those big ships that are carrying all those containers across the ocean, right? So when goods, when things are sent by ship, it's called a cargo. The cargo is due to arrive at 8 a.m. tomorrow. The cargo has, you know, the cargo is being shipped. Car. Why cargo? But those things, when things are sent by truck or by car, they're called a shipment. Doesn't seem to make sense. So when you buy something online, you know, your, your product has been shipped and cut to the product in a box. There it is in the back of someone's car or of truck. It's not being shipped. Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, the cargo has left the port. Cargo? No, ship go. It should be called ship go. Mm-hmm. Next, why do we put cups in the dishwasher and we put dishes in the cupboard? 
we put cups in the dishwasher and then we put the dishes in the cupboard and by the way cupboard is spelt c u p cup and then board b o a r d but it's pronounced cupboard yeah why do we put we could put cups in the dishwasher but then we put dishes in the cupboard what's going on next why did why do doctors practice medicine yeah, he's a a practicing doctor he's been practicing for 25 years now why do doctors practice medicine are they just having practice at the cost of patients i don't want a doctor who's practicing <laughs> i want a doctor who's learned how to do it i want a doctor who's mastered it not someone who's still practicing especially when you have to pay that much money next one why is it called rush hour when traffic moves at its slowest at that time you know between 8 and 9:30 in the morning it's rush hour and you look outside and none of the cars are moving why is it called rush hour <laughs> no one's going anywhere same thing in the evening like 7 p.m. Oh, you won't be able to you know, I'm not going to drive at 7 p.m. It's, it'll be rush hour. We're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, you won't be rushing anyway. You're just going to be sitting still in your car. Why is it called rush hour? Next. How come noses run? Sound effect. How come noses run and feet smell? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't noses smell and feet run? Uh uh uh. No. Sorry. Noses are going to run. and feet are going to smell. <laughs> Next, why do they call it a TV set when there's only one? It's not a set of TVs. Do you like my TV set? You know, they're like I've got a pink one, I've got a blue one, I've got a green one. No, it's a, a set of TVs. A TV set. No, it's just one. Only one TV in a in a TV set. Um I do have answers to many of these questions by the way. as we will discover in a moment. Okay. So, um when you go on a vacation in a in the United States of America because only in the UK we go on holiday, but when Americans from North America from the United States of North America land when you go on vacation, what are you vacating? When you go on a vacation. To vacate something is to leave something empty. I suppose you're vacating your home, aren't you? You're vacating your normal life when you go on a vacation. That's fairly straightforward that one. And then it says, "We can never find the answers, can we?" Well, yeah, you can. <laughs> For some of them you can find the answers, but anyway, they're interesting things to think about. Things to ponder and amusing little questions to to ponder. And it continues, "If you have the spirit of understanding everything in a positive manner, you'll enjoy every moment in life whether it's pressure or pleasure pressure or pleasure so just enjoy the pun and fun of the english language enjoy and have fun and that's from hana fakuri haji phd nonetheless one of the many lepsters uh in existence in lepland Okay, thank you again Hannah. Let's go through those ambiguities as they were described about the English language. And I do have some answers for these things. Um okay. So the word funeral starts with fun. It should be called a sadderall. Yeah, I mean we could look <laughs> oh, there's there's no need to investigate that one, but it's it's true, isn't it? There's not not much fun in a funeral unless you go to like an Irish funeral um where they generally have a big party. and celebrate and there's music and and people drink Guinness and whiskey and stuff that seems pretty fun quite a good way to to celebrate someone's life you know at the end of their at the end of their journey as it were you have a wake for them have a big party that would be that be quite fun but it's rare isn't it to to have so much fun at a funeral obviously they're sad occasions as we all know so yeah it should be called a sadder all not a funeral because every because we're all sad Next, why isn't a fireman called a water man? This is a good question. A fireman doesn't he doesn't bring fire. 
Like, if anything, he should be called a waterman or a... To be honest, like, there's maybe it's a little bit old-fashioned because these days they're called firefighters, people who fight fires, which makes more sense. Plus, women can be can be firefighters as well. So it's not just fireman, firewoman. Firewoman! <laughs> firewoman sounds pretty cool. Fireman sounds pretty cool. Fireman, I am firewoman. We have a very hot relationship. <sighs> um, but no, a fireman should be called a waterman because literally he brings water. It's like he mainly works with water, right? Lots of water all the time. Like, there's a fire, what should, who should we call? Quick, call the fireman. No, we don't need more fire. Call the waterman, we need water. Yeah. To be honest, waterman sounds like a, either it sounds like a superhero who has water as a superpower. All right. Very in demand in the summer for dealing with forest fires, which are no joke, of course. So Waterman, he's either a superhero, water-based superhero. Maybe we've got, maybe he's, maybe he's like Aquaman, you know. It's basically Aquaman's low-budget um, equivalent. Aquaman is the high-budget movie franchise. Waterman is just like the sort of TV series version. So anyway, Waterman is either a superhero or it's a pen, isn't it? A Waterman is a, is a pen. Have you ever seen a Waterman? Waterman. Probably how it's pronounced. It's a, they, they make nice fountain pens. Hmm. Firefighter is the word we use these days. How come lipstick doesn't do what it says? It's true, lipstick doesn't always stick to your lips. Not that I have personal experience of this. Well, I do, because, you know, girlfriends, female friends, and just generally living in the world that has, like, millions of women in it, I have noticed that lipstick doesn't always stick to the lips. So why are they calling it lipstick? It doesn't stick to your lips. Except some of the new, very new, innovative lipstick, which is designed never to come off, never to leave the, 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 the lips of a person. Um, why? How come lipstick doesn't do what it says? Well, it's called lipstick because it's a stick for your lips. A stick, you know, like a little a stick of... What is that stuff? I don't know a stick of stuff you twist the bottom of the stick and out it comes and you can then put it on your lips so it's a stick for your lips it's not a it's not a uh, uh, it's not something that sticks to your lips it's a stick for your lips also it's it's not a stick made of lips lipstick no it's not a stick that stuff is not made of lips it's not like we take another people's lips and put it on and then you put that People who have really nicely coloured lips, we've like taken, stolen their lips, these poor people, and then the pharmaceutical and, um, uh, you know, companies that work in uh, makeup and products in that area, I can't remember the word for it now, cosmetics, of course, <laughs> in the cosmetics industry, they're procuring like other people's lips and they're making a stick out of those lips and then you put their really nice lip colour on. No, that's not how it works. Very strange. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to continue talking about that. That was weird. Anyway, lipstick. It generally doesn't stick to your lips, which is ironic. Next, if money doesn't grow on trees, how come banks have branches? Hmm. <laughs> this is I guess just a coincidence, really, but it's funny, isn't it? So banks have branches, right? You know, if you are with whatever you're, if you're with uh, Luke's Bank, which is probably not a good name for a bank. Luke's Bank. Don't worry, you can trust us with your money. We won't spend it on biscuits, I promise. Save your money in Luke's Bank. It is a real bank. It's not a kid's bank. It's a real bank. Um... No one should call their bank Luke's bank. You're not going to say you're not going to trust that bank, are you? Normally, banks are much more serious. HSBC, Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's TSB, and Investment Bank, and Finance Limited, or something. Not just Luke's bank. Don't worry, I'll keep your money safe. Anyway, banks. Let's call it Luke's bank. There's the head office, the main 
headquarters of the bank and then there are branches in different places right so you can there's always going to be a, a local uh, branch of your of your bank nearby you don't have to travel far in every town or city there's going to be branches of each bank these days we mainly use those bank branches for withdrawing cash from the cash machines and the number of branches that banks have these days has reduced because of online banking and stuff um, but anyway yeah banks have branches but a branch of a bank yes a branch also means a part of a tree, right? The part that comes off the main trunk. These are branches. You climb up the branches if you climb a tree. Um, so, uh, yeah, we call those branches as well. So, yeah, banks have branches, but money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah, okay. All right. N next time someone says that to you, you know, money doesn't grow on trees if you are a child. Next time says someone says that to you, you can say, ah, but... Why, do, if money doesn't grow on trees, why do banks have branches? And then your parents will be, will just say, don't be, don't be, don't be smart, okay? Don't be too clever. It's weird, isn't it? Parents always want their kids to be clever, unless the kid is being clever at the expense of the parents. Oh, you think you're clever, do you? Don't be so clever. Mm. Um, if a vegetarian eats vegetables, what does, what does a humanitarian eat? Humans? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, Aryan at the end of a word doesn't always m denote the thing that people eat. We know that a humanitarian means something else. A humanitarian is someone who believes in humanity and um, works to protect and defend humans and hum humanity, right? Humanitarian charities and things like that. So they just both happen to have the same suffix at the end of the word. But Aryan doesn't mean that you eat that thing, right? What other words have Aryan? Totalitarian. That's not someone who eats everything, is it? Veterinarian. It's not someone who eats vets. Parliamentarian. Not someone who eats parliament. Oh, that would be weird, wouldn't it? Uh, the shocking scenes today at the Houses of Parliament in London. A parliamentarian emerged from the River Thames and started eating the House of Commons. The Prime Minister and several other members of Parliament have been rushed to hospital because of a parliamentarian. Like, it's a monster that comes out of the river and starts eating Parliament, eating politicians. That would be good. That would be a good film. The parliamentarians. The parliamentarians are coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd, I, w I would be surprised if that one turned into a Hollywood film, but you can only hope, can't you? Next, how do you get off a non-stop flight? Yeah, good question. I think the point is that a non-stop flight is a flight that doesn't, um, it doesn't have any kind of layover or, what's the word for it, connecting flights. So it just goes direct to its destination. So if you're traveling to, you know, if you're traveling a long distance, like if you're going to, Japan or something like that, uh, or or you know Hong Kong or something that you don't have to stop in. Where would it be? Like in 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 Dubai or in um, Qatar or in Singapore or something like that. First, um, it just goes direct. So a non-stop flight is another way of saying a direct flight. Of course, it's not just a f a plane that flies and flies and flies until it runs out of fuel and then crashes, or in fact a plane that just flies and flies and flies forever. Just this is just constant, like a satellite. No, obviously. All right. Why are goods sent by ship called cargo and those sent by truck shipment? Well, there is a good answer to this. And ChatGPT this time has the answer. Smarty pants. So clever, aren't you, ChatGPT? Oh, well done. Congratulations. Um, so ChatGPT has the answer. Here it is. Thanks, ChatGPT, I should say. Don't mean to be sarcastic. Not that it has feelings, yet. Anyway, here's what ChatGPT says. Goods that are shipped by boat are called cargo. Because the word cargo comes from the Spanish word cargar, which I spelt, which I pronounced really badly, cagar. Right, cargo comes from the Spanish word cagar, which means to load. So it's actually nothing to do with cars, I think. So cagar means to load. 
This makes sense because when goods are shipped by boat, they are loaded onto the vessel. They're loaded onto the ship. In contrast, goods that are shipped by truck are called a shipment because they are being shipped from one place to another. The word shipment comes from the old French word envoiement, which means the act of sending. So shipping actually means sending. It's a bit like it's a bit like like monkeys and humans. Ship and uh, send come from the same. They have the same uh, common ancestor. Is that right? <laughs> um, ship and send have the same common ancestor. Envoi, envoiement, I think. So the act of sending. So a shipment is a collection of goods that are being sent from one place to another, regardless of the mode of transportation. So there you go. There's the answer. Thanks a lot, ChatGPT. Next, why do we put cups in the dishwasher and dishes in the cupboard? Well, the word cupboard originated in the Middle English word cupboard, which came from the old French word couvert, meaning covered. A cupboard is a type of cabinet or closet that you open with shelves or drawers for storing household items like cups, dishes, plates, glasses. The name cupboard likely comes from the fact that these types of storage unit, these cupboards, coming from the word couvert, covered, covered by something. The word cupboard likely comes from the fact that these types of storage units were originally used to store cups and other dishware. Over time, the meaning of the word cupboard, cupboard, has expanded to include any type of cabinet or closet used for storage. Yes, thanks ChatGPT again for that answer. Um, so yeah, all right. So cupboard basically means a covered storage unit, a covered storage unit. That's what that really means. And so we use it for cups and plates and anything. You put your clothes in a cupboard as well, don't you? Yes, you do. If you don't, maybe you don't. Maybe you just throw them on the floor. I don't know your life. Um, why do doctors practice medicine? You know, I don't want a doctor who practices medicine. Medicine. I want who, someone who's mastered it. Um, I don't actually have a good answer for this. A medical practice. I think it's really just the fact that practice doesn't always mean like practice in the in the sort of uh, sense of trying to get good at something like you have to practice your you know you, you, you practice playing the guitar in order to get good at it you practice your English but I think practice doesn't always mean that it can also just mean to do something so it's you know if we looked at the answer it would probably say well you know practice used to just mean do and that's that's how it's used when referring to doctors. They don't just they're not just trying to improve. Hmm. Let me just you know what's the matter? I've got a I've got a broken leg. Oh, okay. Well, um, this is a great opportunity for me to do some practice. Like, excuse me. Hmm. Um, why is it called rush hour when traffic moves at its low slowest at that time? Well, obviously, because everyone's in a rush to get home, aren't they? At that time. It's just the time when everyone's traveling, everyone's rushing, like, I've got to get to work, I've got to get to work. And then you spend the day at work and then it's like, I've got to get home. It's because everyone is rushing to and fro at that time. Although ironically, no one is actually able to rush because you're just stuck in a car in a traffic jam. Listening to Luke's English podcast. How come noses run and feet smell? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Well, Actually, it works both ways, doesn't it? Nose, it? Your nose can run and your nose can smell as well. Hmm, what's that? Pizza? Hmm, cake? Ke pizza cake? A piece of cake? Hmm, pizza cake. <laughs> How come noses run and feet smell? Noses can run when snot comes out of, the, out of your nose if you've got a cold. I've got a runny nose. Have you got a tissue? Sorry, sorry. It's considered to be very rude in some cultures to blow your nose. Not in the UK, really. If you've got a runny nose, it's not impolite to step away discreetly, maybe to go to the maybe to go to the toilet, or if you have to do it there and then, you blow your nose discreetly. 
Do you have a quick look? Well, oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, loads of yeah, nice. I got I got loads of snot there. Do you do that? Do you look? S someone's going. Oh no! Oh no! I wouldn't look. Oh, that's disgusting. And other people are going. Yeah, yeah. I do have a good look sometimes. It can be quite satisfying when you get a good tissue full. But it's also important for health reasons to have a quick look just to see what the kind of stuff's coming out of your nose. If there's if there are some bits of brain in there, then you might need to worry. You know, you might need to go and see a doctor and give him a chance to do some practice. <laughs> um, feet can smell, right? Can't they? Yeah. Do you know anyone who's got very smelly feet? Yeah, it's a problem. Feet can smell and feet can run as well, of course. Okay. Uh, why do they call it a TV set when there's only one? Well, yes, of course, the know-it-all chat GPT has the answer. <gasps> Yawn. Get used to it, folks. Uh, the word set in this context, TV set, refers to a complete television system, not just the physical television itself. A television set includes the television, as well as any additional components or accessories that are required to receive and display television signals. In the past, television sets often included components such as a VCR, DVD player or cable box. And these additional components were often referred to as attachments. Even though most, tele most modern televisions are self-contained and do not require additional components, the term television set is still used to refer to the entire system. So there you go. What are you vacating when you go on a vacation? Well, I've answered this. I think you're vacating your home, meaning you're leaving your home, right? Or leaving your normal life. There you go. There's the answer to that. Um, so that's it. That brings us to the end of this. I said before that I might do a recap of some vocab. Let, let's just have a quick look at, at that, shall we? At some of the bits of vocab maybe that uh, you could remember. Uh, a fat chance. You've got a fat chance. You know, are you gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna run the marathon, are you? You're gonna th you think you can run the marathon? He's got, a f he's got a fat chance of finishing that marathon. There's no way you're gonna do it in less than three hours. Fat chance of that. You've got to, you know, and it's like, um, people are saying that, uh, you know, uh, uh, commentators are saying that uh, England have a very slim chance of winning the World Cup this year due to their recent performance. Fat chance and a slim chance. Uh, mm -hmm. What else? What else have I got? A tube of toothpaste. It lasts. How long does it last? Depends on how you use it. Poison. Poison expires. Food expires. Milk. I've got a bottle of milk here. It's got an expiry date and it expires. Also, other things can expire, like a ticket can expire. If you've got like a discount ticket, it might have an expiry date. That's probably an in international word, I suppose. Yeah. We also have other dates, like we have sell-by date, the sell-by date, mm -hmm. uh, and the um, and the use-by date. The sell-by date. This is the the after this date, the shop can't sell it, right? And then there's the use-by date, which is like you have to use the product before the before that date. After that date, it will be off. It'll go bad. Like milk goes off, food goes bad after the use by date, usually. The armrest, the armrest in the cinema or on a plane. Who's got the armrest? That's, that's still unresolved, I think. But as we know, this is going to be, until we've resolved that problem, um, I don't know if we can expect to, to achieve peace on Earth. Maybe we just, all we need to do, cinemas just need to design uh, their seats with a double armrest between each seat and maybe a little wall mm, is that too much a little wall probably is especially if you're sitting next to your girlfriend and you want to get your arm over her shoulder or if you want to hold hands or something in the cinema then that wall's going to be a problem so uh, i don't know sometimes you solve one problem you just create another one don't you but i think the double armrest what's wrong with that and then the, the the cinema people are going, oh, you know, adding double armrests that's going to cost us, you know, thirteen billion pounds. <laughs> Sorry, only single armrests are possible. Same thing on on planes. 
like adding double armrests on the planes that's going to expand the planes by 370 percent the costs of plane tickets are going to go up by three billion pounds sorry no you, you're going to have to work it out yourselves you'll have to just deal with it between each other and one person, one nice person, is going to have to sit like this, aren't they? With their arms squeezed against their sides. Is that you? Is that you? Are you that person who in the cinema or on the plane just sits and doesn't have any armrest? They just sit with their arms squeezed against their sides. If that is you, well done. <laughs> Round of applause for you for making the world a little easier for other people. It's your sacrifice is saving the world. You're like Jesus on a plane. Fridge, refrigerator, what else have we got? Banks have branches. Visit your local branch of Luke's Bank in order to uh, send money internationally. Vegetarians, humanitarians, a non-stop flight, a direct flight, cargo and shipment. Cargo, the stuff that's on a ship. A shipment, the stuff that's being transported in a car the dishwasher, the cupboard. Where do you, where shall I put these cups? Oh, just up there in the uh, cupboard there, just the one above the sink. Open the cupboard, there you go, that's where the cups go. There you are. What about these cups? What about these cups? Ah, never mind, just smash them on the floor, why not? Don't do that. Doctors practice medicine, they have medical, um, they have a, a doctor has a medical practice. Rush hour, fine. R to have a runny nose. His nose is running again. Can you wipe his nose? It's running again. Yeah, there's a tissue. Just wipe his nose. There you go. And the other person's like, get off me. I'm 42 years old. Uh, why do they call it a TV set when there's only one? Well, we know the set refers to the aerial and the plug cable and maybe even a cabinet, maybe even an, a video player, DVD player or something, the controller and other things that go together with the, with the TV. The whole thing is called a TV set, but people generally just call the TV a TV set. All right, so that's it. Just a very quick recap of some of the vocab. Um, you can find all of that stuff that I read from on my website, uh, teacherluke.co.uk. Okay, find the page for this episode. Just go to the episode archive on my website, teacherluke.co.uk. If you click episodes in the menu, you'll find an archive of every episode I've ever done. And the, you know, the list goes on. There's just so many episodes. You could go in and have a look. Um, if you are fairly new to my podcast and you, uh, you sometimes think, Luke, why don't you do an episode about this? Oh, I'd love it if you did an episode about that. You could check my episode archive. And if you are interested in more stuff, like specific language teaching stuff where I teach you uh, vocabulary or grammar, uh, or if I pick out lots of phrases that I've used in other episodes or conversations on my podcast and I teach those phrases to you and I use my teaching skills to help you understand and remember those words and phrases to really expand your vocabulary and to give you pronunciation practice so you can practice repeating after me with controlled practice. Uh, if you want that, if you want the benefit of my teaching skills, you could sign up to Luke's English Podcast Premium. You just go to teacherluke.co.uk um, slash premium. Okay, and um, you can sign up for Luke's English Podcast Premium for just $4 a month, not including tax. Um, and if you sign up to that, you get all the premium episodes. And at this point, there are, there's like maybe about 150 premium episodes now. More. I think it's more. It's got to be nearly 200, I think, now. And that's for $4 a month, and I publish new premium content all the time. You can just add it to a podcast app on your phone and listen to the premium episodes in the same way that you would listen to normal podcast episodes. Uh, or you can sign up to Luke's English Podcast episodes with no advertising. That's where you can listen to the audio podcast and you won't be interrupted by any advertising. But LEP Premium is, is the one I recommend. So you click join on that, go through the sign up process, and then you can add uh, the premium podcast to a podcast app on your phone. And that's the most convenient way to do it. That way you look at the show notes for the premium episodes. You can find links for PDFs and video versions of premium episodes too. That's at teacherluke.co.uk slash premium. 
Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, leave a comment, leave a like as well. If you are, you know, depending on the platform that you're using, if you're on my website, you can leave a comment uh, at the bottom of the page. Uh, you can recommend the episode to friends, uh, share the episode uh, online with your friends in whatever way you, you choose. If you're on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get uh, new episodes. Click that bell icon so that you get uh, notifications of new episodes that I publish. Um, and uh, tell me what you think as well. Leave your comments. Any other questions, thoughts, strange, peculiar things that you've noticed about English or about life in general, uh, share them in the comments section. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. I will speak to you again uh, in another episode of my podcast. But for now, it's just time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.